Hi, it's Dwyer. Dwyercrime.blog. RichardDwyer.com. Today is October the 31st, 2020. Halloween. Let's talk about Chris Watts and his victims. Shannon Watts, Bella Watts, and Celeste Watts. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now some excellent videos have been made on this case that are right now on YouTube. In the description section of this video, I will put one such video. It actually shows the police camera footage of the police officer's first encounter with Chris Watts after Shannon Watts's friend calls police the very day Shannon goes missing. Right? You can read the body language of the friend. Clearly, some of Shannon's friends had doubts about Chris. You can hear Chris Watts's stunted responses. You can actually hear the officer ask Chris Watts about the state of his marriage and Chris Watts on the day his wife goes missing tell the cops that they were separated. Now let me just point out that there are some very damaged people involved in some of the crimes we discuss here online. You have some people who really are psychopathic. They lack empathy. They lack a conscience. Family members to them are just pieces of furniture that they can discard. Right? Credibility to them is not important. They will give different versions of what happened to law enforcement or to their own attorneys. Right? So, of course, as we look back on the case, we're really uncertain of exactly what took place. That's the problem, the big problem, with Chris Watts's triple homicide. We have to rely on Chris Watts, who is a narcissistic psychopath. Right, this guy has a problem telling the truth. Different facts come out that contradict each other when it suits his cause. This is not BTK, this is not Dennis Rader, a killer who once he's caught, decides, okay, this is my chance to look like a criminal mastermind and to tell you exactly what happened. To impress you with my impeccable recall of dastardly murderous deeds. This is not that guy. This is a different personality type. So we have to work around Chris Watts here in figuring out what happened. In this video, I'm just going to point to some contradictions and also hopefully shine a light on some of the areas I believe folks need to look. Now first, let's dispel the notion that this was a heat of the moment, spontaneous murder that snowballed. Right? I feel that way about the Jeffrey McDonald family murders, right? I believe that Jeffrey McDonald that night loses it because one of his daughters wets the bed he shared with his wife. And I believe he then loses it, kills his wife, kills his kids, doesn't want witnesses. That's not this case. Right? That is not the Chris Watts case. This is a premeditated family annihilation. The murder is clearly thought out. It's planned for. How do we know? It's because Shannon Watts had oxycodone in her system 
which Chris Watts admits giving her. Now understand, his wife is about four months pregnant at the time. Four months pregnant. I don't believe she knew she was taking oxycodone. She may have come home from the business trip, right, on August the 13th, 2018. She may have come home, been tired, and Chris Watts may have said, hey, look, why don't you take this? It'll help you sleep. Right? Understand, Shannon Watts is drugged by her husband that night. We know the condition she was when she arrives at the house because there's film footage, security footage, of her walking up to the house after she's dropped off early in the morning at 1.48 a.m. We know she's able to walk. We know she's okay. Well, just to understand, when her body is found, she has oxycodone in it. And understand, Chris Watts has admitted to giving her the drug. Let me also say, too, red flags should be going off. Because who gave Chris Watts the oxycodone? If you believe that somebody else worked with Chris Watts, to help facilitate the murder of his family, then this is the place to look at the oxycodone. Now, Chris Watts won't say who gave him the oxy. He is protecting his source. Now, let's back up and talk about some facts that I believe are salient here. Understand that the couple meets online on Facebook in 2010 when Chris Watts sends Shannon a friend request. Now, Shannon dated Chris Watts for well over a year before they get married. They get married November 3rd, 2012. Bella is born December 17th, 2013. In other words, this couple actually got to know each other. Right? Bella is not born until a year and one month into the marriage. Right? Three, excuse me, two years later, almost two years later, a year and a half later, July 17th, 2015, Celeste is born. But something major happens the month before Celeste is born that I think we need to focus on. In June of 2015, while Shannon Watts is pregnant with Celeste, the Wattses file for bankruptcy. Now, as a couple, they made $90,000 in 2014. Right? They made $90,000. They were paying a $3,000 a month mortgage. They were paying $600 a month in car payments. Let me state the obvious. These two weren't good with money. Right? I'm sure there were rentals that they could have rented for less than $3,000 a month. I'm sure there were used cars they could have driven for less than $600 a month. They had $4,900 in monthly expenses. This is while they had one child with another on the way. Now, it is possible that Chris Watts then started associating pregnancy, right, fatherhood, with financial responsibility and hardship, right? They filed for bankruptcy one month before Celeste is born. 
Now let's fast forward almost three years to May the 5th, 2018. Shannon posts a very loving Facebook Live video where she talks about her husband in glowing terms. Right? In that video, she says, I love waking up now on Saturdays and being able to enjoy my family. She goes further. She says, I believe that everything in life happens for a reason. And I also believe people are placed in our life for a reason. Now, this could be interpreted two ways. Right? One is that she's in love with her husband. She considers herself to be very lucky. The other is that she's try to convince herself that she's happy, that there are problems in the marriage, that she might be a passive aggressive who wants to hold on to her husband and wants him to know that by making videos like this. Understand, in the video, the husband's in the background playing with their kids, right? I believe Chris Watts knew since he met his wife on Facebook that she was putting posts on Facebook where she was talking about how great their marriage was, right? I believe that many people with great marriages don't feel the need to post things like this online. This marriage may have been a bit troubled. Well, the very next month, June 11th, 2018, Shannon surprises Chris, tells him that they're expecting. Now, it's very important here to pay attention to the dates. As best we know, on June 11th, 2018, Chris Watts has not had a telephone conversation with the woman who would end up being his mistress. To protect her privacy, since I've found nothing in the file, and I know this is controversial, that links her to the planning of this triple homicide, I'm not going to say her name. But I'll concede, here on YouTube, there are differences of opinion about that. Well, just to understand, as best we know, on June the 11th, 2018, Chris Watts had not spoken on the phone with his mistress. He had not slept with his mistress. Put bluntly, when Chris Watts heard that he and his wife were expecting another child, he was not involved with his mistress. They were not a couple. Well, let me say this. The mistress goes to his house for the first time, according to some reports, on July the 4th. Right? Their first phone call that we know of takes place on July the 7th. In early July, Chris Watts starts a physical relationship with this other woman. Right, folks? It's new. Right? It's new. Let me also say, too, that Chris Watts tells her that he's married tells her that he's going to get a divorce, and then he does some things that are consistent with a guy who is about to get a divorce. He allows photos to be taken of the two of them. Right? Why would you do that if you live in an area that's not a major city where people know you? Isn't it too big a risk? if you're having an affair, to take photos with your mistress. More importantly, folks, he barely knew the mistress. 
right? This is a woman he met at work. How did he build up the level of trust to allow photos of the two of them to be taken together? When you look at the photos, you understand that the two of them are involved. Right? From my perspective, one man's opinion, the mistress had no reason to suspect that Chris Watts was not going to leave his wife. Well, let's talk about what happens the very next month. Understand, his dalliance with his mistress, the physical part of their relationship, had only happened for a few weeks before we get to August the 13th, 2018. Right? Let me back up a little bit more. Shannon, when she was out on business trips, Chris Watts would go to restaurants and eat. Well, understand, Chris Watts, on August 11th, 2018, hires a babysitter to tend to the kids. Let's remember, this is a couple with two young daughters. So if he's going to step out on his wife, he has to make arrangements. That creates other witnesses, doesn't it? Let's go further too. That would further validate the relationship to the other woman, wouldn't it? You're seeing a married man. He's actually meeting you for dinner without the kids. And you understand he would have to make arrangements for the kids. So, Chris Watts, on August 11th, 2018, goes to Lazy Dog Restaurant with his mistress. Now again, folks, they're not in a big town. Chris had been to the Lazy Dog before. Here he's taking his mistress to places where he's been. He and his mistress are out in public. Right, out in public in August of 2018, just two months, two months to the day, by the way, that his wife told him that they were expecting. So we get to August the 13th, 2018. Shannon returns from the business trip. Shannon and the two kids go missing. We are left to hear from Chris Watts what happened. I don't think we fully know. Just understand that when Chris Watts starts confessing, in his original story, he claimed that Shannon comes home and then Shannon smothers the two daughters to death. In revenge, Chris Watts claims he then killed his wife. Now let's talk about one of the problems with this story just up front. First, Chris Watts couches the story to look as innocent as possible. He's that much of a narcissist. But more importantly, he had already spoken to the local ABC affiliate and he had already begged to have his family return home. This was before. He then tells the cops that his wife killed the kids and that he then killed his wife. Right? He actually says to Denver's ABC affiliate, Shannon, Bella, Celeste, if you're out there, just come back. Like if somebody has her, just please bring her back. I need to see everybody. I need to see everybody. Again, this house is not complete without anybody here. Please bring them back. 
So after this guy makes this public pitch the day after his wife and children go missing, he then has the audacity to double back and tell the cops, okay, you know what? That pitch was fraudulent. My wife killed the kids, and I killed my wife in revenge. Now just understand, that's his first story, right? His second story, and this is evolving. Again, we don't know quite what happened. We know she has oxy in her system, but we don't know quite what happened. The second story is that he and his wife are in bed. They make love. They're hanging out. And then they start talking about his affair. Right? This is the portion of the story where the claim is made that the wife may have learned from receipts that two days earlier Chris Watts was in a restaurant and spent more on his lazy dog meal than one person would spend. So the wife suspected that he was having an affair. So Chris Watts claims he tells his wife, I want a divorce. I don't love you anymore. Right? Only a narcissist would come up with this story where they make love and then in the same interaction are saying, I want a divorce. I don't love you anymore. So, of course, we get the heat of passion claim where Shannon then gets angry, things escalate, and he ends up strangling her. So, of course, he claims then in this story that his older daughter, Bella, right then walks into the room and says, what's wrong with mommy? Right? So, of course, Chris Watts, according to this version, wraps his wife in a sheet, right? Drags her out to his truck, puts her body in the truck, puts the kids in the truck, drives them to the place, the oil battery cases, where his wife's body is found, right, um, buried, and the, he then strangles his kids. Think about this. Strangles his kids and puts them in the oil battery tanks. Now, I want people to just focus on the psychopathy of the story here. Supposedly, he's afraid of losing his family. He's afraid of losing his kids. So, of course, in the same story, he strangles his two young daughters after accidentally killing his wife. Chris Watts wants you to believe that that story makes sense. Well, let's talk about his third story. And understand, there are more versions. We're just dribbling this out, right? I'm going to stop at three. But you'll understand that each story Chris Watts has told has major holes because he's a psychopath and he's a bad liar. So in his third story, and this is really macabre, he claims that he just wanted out. So of course, he tries to smother his kids. This is before killing his wife. He takes a pillow and tries to smother his two young daughters. He claims he then hops in bed with his wife. Now think about that for a moment. 
He kills his two daughters. He doesn't say, then I went to kill my wife. No, in the confession, he's claiming he then crawls into bed with his wife. So let me read it here, because it's that incoherent, the relevant portion. August 13th, morning of, I went to the girl's room first, before Shannon and I had our argument. I went to Bella's room, Bella's the older daughter, then Cece's room, and used the pillow from their bed. That's why the cause of death was smothering. After I left Cece's room, then I climbed back in bed. Let me repeat that. Then I climbed back in bed with Shannon, and our argument ensued. After Shannon had passed, Bella and Cece woke back up. I'm not sure how they woke back up, but they did. Bella's eyes were bruised, and both girls looked like they had been through trauma. This made the act that much worse, knowing I went to their rooms first, and knowing I still took their lives at the location of the batteries. Folks, like the other two confessions, this confession is not remotely credible. Why would he climb back into bed with his wife after killing his kids? What did he think would happen in the morning? Right, folks, this story's just not remotely believable. If he smothered his kids to death before returning to the bedroom, knowing that his wife was drugged, he wouldn't crawl back into bed with his wife, who is arguing with him. Rather, he would return to the bedroom to kill his wife. Isn't that how it would play out? So the problem I have with the Chris Watts story, and don't get me wrong, he's guilty. I'm not here saying anything else. But he's a liar. He's lied to us. He's writing letters right now to at least one author talking about what happened. Right, talking about how when he walked away he said, that's the last time I'm going to be tucking my babies. Right? He's now openly confessing to the idea that when his wife arrived home, he was planning on killing the family. Well, let's back up. Why would he wait for his wife to come home before killing his family? Right? He's the only adult. The kids can't fight back. Why would he wait for his wife to be physically at the house before he killed his kids? So to sum up, I don't believe we know what happened the night of August the 13th, 2018. After Shannon was dropped off at the house at 1.48 a.m. Right? I don't think we know. I think this Chris Watts guy is a psychopath who enjoys the attention that giving confessions gives him. Understand, at one point he says to the police, let me talk with my dad. Then he talks with his dad. Then, of course, he decides he's going to confess, and that's when he gives the preposterous confession, where Shannon comes home, kills her two daughters, none of her friends believe Shannon would ever do that, right? Kills her two daughters, and then he kills her in revenge. Right? So this guy's using everyone as a prop. Right? His wife, his two kids, they might as well be pieces of furniture. 
He needs another piece. He tells the police, it's all a show. He tells the police, let me talk with my dad. Then he talks with the dad and follows that up with a false confession. I'm not sure if anything Chris Watts has said is true. Apart from where to find the bodies. Understand too, there are people who saw Chris Watts that morning, right? Because he goes to work, right? He gets rid of the bodies, then he's at work. So there are people who saw him. Now, apart from the fact that Chris Watts's clothes are a little disheveled and that Chris Watts's car is parked someplace it shouldn't have been, Chris Watts was completely as he always was. He didn't look traumatized. He wasn't trying to confess to anyone. Folks, he looked normal for him. That's the level of psychopath that we're dealing with. So again, in the description section of this video, I want you to click on the link that shows the police's initial interaction with Chris Watts. Right As you watch that, you need to understand that that takes place the day his wife goes missing. Understand, the woman who dropped off Shannon Watts at 1.48 in the morning, right, at 1.40 p.m. later that day, after Shannon misses her doctor's visit, that woman calls police. Right, she's in the video, by the way. And you could tell from her body language, she's concerned for her friend. In other words, her friend is married to someone, Chris Watts, who she doubts. Let me say this too. The cops are at the house. Now understand how serious it is. Your wife is pregnant. She's pregnant. You have two young daughters. They're all missing. The police come to your house. They're telling you that your wife and two young daughters are missing. If you're an innocent man, you would be talking to the cops to find out what the hell is going on. There'd be some urgency. If you're a guy who was having marital problems, who had a mistress, who thought that your wife may have left you, you would be talking to the cops to make sure the cops know all the facts, and it would be an emotional time. Chris Watts takes out his cell phone. I wish I were kidding, folks. He takes out his cell phone. And then he starts texting people. This is as he's hearing from the police that his wife and two young daughters are missing. And we know the real truth. This is the same day. This is within hours of him killing his family, burying his wife, and throwing his kids back bodies into oil battery tanks, right? Because this guy is really one of the worst psychopaths I have ever encountered in researching crime. I just don't believe anything he has to say. Nothing whatsoever. And that, of course, hinders our ability to fully figure out how did he get the oxycodone? Is anyone else involved? What really was his end game? Since he's having photos taken of him and his new mistress, and since he's going to restaurants out in public with his new mistress, who he barely knows. How does he know that his new mistress is going to keep any of his secrets. How do we know if his mistress 
thought that he was lying and was going to stay with his wife. Folks, we just don't have that information. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you have a theory on what happened, if there are some facts that you believe are salient, which we haven't emphasized, then I hope you leave that information in the comment section of this video. I personally believe that the June 2015 bankruptcy contributed greatly to this triple homicide. I believe Chris Watts was financially stretched and he wanted out. Right? They were in financial trouble when they were pregnant with Celeste. I believe he understood that Nico, his son, that was going to be his son's name, was going to lead to more expenses. In one of his confessions, he tells the police that he talked with his wife about the possibility of moving, possibly downsizing, right? I believe he wanted to start anew. Now understand, he's such a psycho that he can't hide it. In one of his confessions, he tells the police that after he killed his wife, he felt no remorse. He actually tells the cops he felt relieved. Right? He's a psycho who doesn't understand how killing your pregnant wife, who's the mother of your two kids, and then telling the police that you felt no remorse when she's just returned from a business trip would be completely mind-blowing. This guy's such a psychopath, he has no idea. Let me just say too, I was stunned in researching this case to find out that the couple had actually dated for a couple of years before tying the knot. I thought maybe there was a possibility that Shannon didn't know this guy who clearly lacks social skills. Again, just look at his interaction in his talk with the police the day his family goes missing. That's in the video for which I have a link in the description section here on YouTube. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. Thanks for stopping by.